Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a video on the pros and cons of being a wedding planner. I thought this would be really interesting for you guys to hear because I think a lot of you when you hear that people are in the wedding industry in general, like, oh, I'm a wedding planner, I'm a wedding photographer or florist or caterer, you tend to immediately think, oh, what a glamorous lifestyle. And while it mostly is, and I do love what I do, and I hope that you guys see that just from, you know, watching the videos on this channel, um, there are also some things that I think that if you're, if you're going to go into the industry down the road or you're thinking of taking this career path, you should definitely be aware of. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the cons of being a wedding planner, just so you can kind of get some more insight um, about what it means to be a business owner as well as being in the wedding industry. And then I'll go ahead and go into the pros and end on a positive note. Now, I'm not making this video to discourage anyone from being in the wedding industry or becoming a wedding planner. I just think it's interesting for you guys to hear, you know, the reality of the profession. So I hope that you guys find this useful and insightful. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first con is that when you go into the wedding business, likely you'll be working for yourself. It's really hard to kind of break into the hospitality industry as a whole. So for example, if you watch my video on how I became a wedding planner, you know that I tried to break into it by working for other people instead of just taking this huge risk and starting my own business, but I wasn't able to do it. So I did start my own business and a lot of people go that route. However, with that comes the territory of being a business owner, which is very stressful in and of itself. So you have a lot of costs to being in, to being self-employed basically. And the biggest one is going to be health insurance because obviously you have to be covered. Um, also business insurance. And you also have to pay your own self-employment taxes, which I think was the biggest shock to me when I first went into business for myself. Um, the taxes that are taken out of my paychecks from clients are higher than when I was working for a company. So that's also something to keep in mind too. In addition to that, you have to do your own advertising. You have to hire graphic designers if you don't know how to build a website. You have to pay for your website domain. There are a lot of expenses to this business because you have to get your name out there somehow. And I know in my video on how I became a wedding planner, I talked about how I initially advertised on Craigslist, but it gets to a point after that where you really want to be advertising to a different clientele and acquire clients that are willing to pay what you deserve to be paid on the wedding day. So I started out with Craigslist because um, I was offering my services at a very, very, very discounted rate. But now I don't want to be offering my services when I'm not making any money. Before, I wasn't really making money with those Craigslist clients just because I wasn't charging enough. Now I need to actually make a profit. So I need to advertise, you know, I currently advertise on The Knot, which is really expensive. I also advertise on Once Wed, which is also very expensive. So that's something to keep in mind as well. I'm just going to go on a quick tangent, <laughs> if you'll let me, on why wedding vendors charge what they do. One of the biggest things I will hear is wedding vendors are just so expensive. And I completely sympathize with you when Josh and I were planning our wedding, I had a lot Lot of sticker shock when I was getting responses from vendors that I was inquiring with. Um, but now being in the profession, I understand why they charge what they do. Um, the things that I had just listed, just the insurance and all the expenses that come with advertising, getting getting your name out there, that is a huge chunk of what clients pay you taken out right away that you'll never see. So what you're left over with is actually not a lot of money. In addition to that, being in the wedding business specifically, you have a lot of added pressure on your shoulders that can kind of weigh on you as the wedding season progresses to be absolutely perfect. This really is one day. It's one day that the bride and groom are going to remember forever. It's a very different type of of event than say just like a birthday party or something. Um, that was the reasoning I was getting from a lot of wedding vendors as to why they were charging more, specifically hair and makeup. I was like, well, why is a wedding updo more expensive than just a special occasion updo? And you kind of see that a lot with wedding vendors. And it's because of that added extra pressure to be absolutely perfect on your wedding day. Um, my hair and makeup person took a lot more time with me on my wedding day. And so, you know, as far as like florists and photographers, it's the same situation. They take a lot more time with you. They have more consultations with you. Um, and there's just a lot of extra effort that's put into making your wedding day perfect. So that's just my ex quick explanation on why wedding vendors charge what they do. Um, obviously, if a photographer is charging you $10,000, I think that might be a little excessive, depending on if they're like a celebrity photographer or something. Um, but when you see that wedding coordinators are charging, you know, twelve to fifteen hundred dollars for day of coordination and a little bit more, obviously, for partial or full planning, just keep in mind that our actual take-home pay is not that much after everything is said and done. So. 
End tangent, moving on. Going along with being a business owner, you have a lot of accountability for keeping your business afloat as far as you know, good word of mouth and things like that. So for example, if a client writes a so-so or lukewarm review on you on say Wedding Wire or The Knot, that could be detrimental to your business's reputation and that's a lot of extra stress and, um, and pressure as well. So keep that in mind too, is that you have to constantly be thinking about if you're doing a good enough job to keep that client happy and to write a good review about you in the future because that's how you're going to get a lot of your business is through referrals from working with other vendors, um, word of mouth from previous clients, as well as reviews on other websites. So um, the extra accountability can sometimes add a lot of extra stress onto people and you may or may not be cut out for that. Over time, it has taken me a while to be okay with it, but at first it was something that was kind of a shock to me is just a lot of pressure to make sure that my business can stay afloat over the years. The next con is that if you absolutely live for summer and fall, what Wedding season happens to be summer and fall, so you're not going to have a lot of free time during those months. And that is one thing that I do still struggle with, I will admit. I obviously love what I do and I love going to weddings on the weekends, but sometimes it's really hard when you're working a wedding on, say, Labor Day weekend and your friends and family are having a really great barbecue or bonfire and you can't go. So that is something that you kind of need to keep in mind when you're thinking about going into this profession is that April through October, um, hopefully as your business picks up, you will be really, really busy. And in addition to that, if you have a spouse or a significant other and they work a regular schedule, it is kind of hard to plan time with them during wedding season. I know that, you know, Josh does come with me on wedding days. He does work as my assistant. So we do spend time together that way, but obviously we're working. So we're not spending quality time with each other. There are times when I do decide to turn down business when I feel like I really need to make sure that I'm spending time with, you know, my husband and my friends and my family and making sure that I'm not so over really stressed that I'm getting burnt out. So sometimes it's kind of a trade-off. You do want the money for the business that you're going to be turning down, but at the same time, you know, you have to make sure that you're keeping a very balanced lifestyle, which I still struggle with and I'm still kind of working my way around, but over time um, it does start to get easier. But it's something to consider when you do go into this profession. The last con that I want to mention is that you do kind of have to develop a thick skin when you're a business owner, especially in the wedding industry. Um, when you're working with people on wedding days, emotions are heightened so sometimes um, a family member or not necessarily the bride and groom I really have never worked with a bride and groom that have been really upset on their wedding day so it's usually a family member who is just really emotionally overwhelmed with happiness or whatever that day and sometimes they'll snap at you and take it out on you because you are the wedding planner if one little thing might not go exactly as planned that really has not happened to me more than maybe once or twice if ever um, but you have to keep that in mind is that sometimes that does happen and it's not because you're doing a bad job um, I mean maybe it is I don't know but usually it's just because emotions are heightened and people are just taking out what they're feeling onto you and that can happen but you have to just keep in mind that it's business it's not personal as long as you're doing your job correctly everything will work itself out and you just can't take that home with you and just think oh I'm the worst wedding planner ever because you know the bride's aunt freaked out on me or whatever so you kind of have to make sure that you are able to separate those two things so moving on to the pros of being a wedding planner obviously the most exciting thing is that you're a wedding planner and it is really fun to go to weddings every weekend especially during wedding season um, it's hard to explain, but once you're there and you're in the thick of it and you're, um, it's, well, for me anyway, as far as coordinating and, you know, just greeting all the vendors and seeing everything come together and helping and assisting with setup, it's just, to me, I'm in my element and I love it. It's just, I feel very supported by a lot of creative wedding professionals in the industry and I feel very inspired by the people that I work with and meeting new people in the industry. It's it's all very exciting and it helps that you do get to eat cake and whatever dessert buffet the bride and groom put out. So you have to make sure you keep your eye on that though because it's easy to kind of just gain a few pounds during wedding season when you're eating a lot of wedding cake over the summer. But yeah, so weddings are very exciting. They are a lot of fun, especially during the reception once the bride and groom um, have gone through like their first dance and all the toast and everything and it's just party time. Just walk Watching everyone celebrate with their friends and family is just such a great reward at the end of the night. It's just, 
it totally makes my day. So it is a really fun career to be in. So that's the first pro. The second is that you do have a little bit more of a flexible schedule. So for example, if I had a especially rough wedding weekend, I will take off Mondays. So I can just take off a random Monday and go run errands when everyone else is at work. It is really nice to be able to do that. If I need to have a doctor's appointment on a Wednesday afternoon at three o'clock, I can. It's easy for me to do it as long as I don't have any other client meetings scheduled. Um, so I mean, I am in charge of my own schedule and that is a really big pro for me because working in an fluorescent lit office nine to five Monday through Friday was something that I discovered early on in my career that I just, it wasn't for me. And having the freedom to be outside a lot and to travel and be meeting different people, um, that is more my taste as far as a career. And I absolutely love that aspect of it. So the flexibility thing is really great. Um, going along with what I was saying about turning down business if you need to take a weekend off, that sometimes can get tricky, but you are able to take off whatever time you need. So usually because my wedding season is so busy from April through October, come November, I may only take on one or two clients. And this past December, I took on absolutely none. Um, I just really wanted the entire month of December to myself. And I was able to do that as long as you plan ahead accordingly, because weddings are obviously booked usually about a year or two out. So make sure that you book that time off for yourself way ahead of time. And you know, you're able to do so and you're able to enjoy yourself when you want to. So that is a really good pro. The last pro is kind of cheesy, but um, when you're in the wedding industry, your research for your job is going to, you know, bridal fairs and reading Martha Stewart weddings and looking at Style Me Pretty all day. So, you know, I mean, as much as that's not a huge part of my job, it is something that I do need to do on a regular basis to keep up with the wedding trends. And to me, I would just be doing that anyway. So it is really fun. Um, and that is pretty much it. So I hope that was helpful to you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you back here soon. Bye.